Thanks for coming. We appreciate you being here. A uh, couple of our members are running late, uh, Senator Thune and Senator Heitkamp. I think they may uh, join us in progress. We're here to talk about uh, Voluntary COOL, Voluntary Country of Origin Labeling and Trade Enhancement Act, which is a bill that we're introducing today. Bipartisan bill, and uh, we have an excellent group of co-sponsors. I want to thank uh, Senator Stabenow from Michigan for being the lead on the Democrat side, uh, but also uh, on the Republican side of the aisle, Senator John Thune, Senator Chuck Grassley for joining us on this legislation, as well as uh, on the other side of the aisle, Senator Klobuchar and uh, Senator Heidkamp. Uh, also, Senator Mike Enzi and uh, Senator Sherrod Brown uh, are joining us as uh, original co-sponsors on the bill as well. So it's a, a balanced group, bipartisan group. And what we're looking to do is to find a solution for the WTO action in regard to country of origin labeling, uh, but still maintaining the grade A label, which is something that uh, many of the uh, pro-cool advocates very much want. So essentially what this legislation does is it repeals mandatory cool and puts a voluntary program in place. So the repeal of mandatory cool, similar to what the House did, addresses the WTO action. And then the voluntary program maintains the grade A label. And we talk <clears throat> about the grade A label, we mean born, raised, and slaughtered in the United States. This applies to beef, to pork, and to chicken. So again, it's about uh, addressing uh, the issue of the WTO action and any duty or tariff in a way where we make sure that we don't have the duties or, the, or countervailing duty or the tariffs, but we still have a voluntary program and maintain the grade A label. And if you look, that's exactly what Canada does. Canada has a voluntary program. And so <clears throat> we're doing the same thing uh, as Canada. I'll wrap up with, I did visit with uh, the uh, USTR uh, ambassador, uh, Darcy Vetter, uh, we talked about this at length. And really, the sense from USTR is that whether you repeal mandatory cool or you repeal mandatory cool and replace uh, with voluntary cool, we're in the same position. And so this is a way to, uh, we hope, address this issue in a, in a fair way um, and in a way that we think um, is best for our producers. Um, uh, for the industry and for our consumers, uh, but also uh, fair to both uh, Canada and Mexico as well. So with that, I'd like to turn to Senator Stebner. Well, thank you, Senator Hoven. It's, it's wonderful, as usual, working with Senator Hoven and all of my colleagues from the Agriculture Committee, all of us here uh, representing uh, and fighting for our farmers and ranchers across the country. I want to thank Senator Hoven for his leadership and uh, all of us together. Uh, actually, if you look at our committee, there is a majority of those on the committee supporting what we are doing now, which is terrific, which means we can get this done. Uh, but we all agree, and farmers and ranchers across the country, business people concerned about retaliation, all agree we need to act after this WTO case. Now that this is done, the actions have been taken, we need to act now. Uh, it's not responsible to be in a position where we do not address this uh, and retaliation takes effect. We all know that. This is a responsible approach that addresses the WTO, uh, does it in a way that's consistent with the ruling, but also uh, recognizes and frankly celebrates the high quality products, the meats that are made here in America. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting about this whole debate is the fact that uh, back when we were debating whether or not to have a mandatory country of labeling program, the opponents put forward a bill with a voluntary label. And so uh, it has actually been put forward before uh, and as the alternative. And before the WTO in 2012, both the Canadians and Mexicans are on the record as saying the U.S. has a number of options. We don't have to do mandatory cool. We could have a voluntary label. So we have listened to them and we are now uh, moving forward 
with uh, what at the time we debated mandatory country of origin was viewed as the reasonable approach by those who did not support cool. So we need to act. Uh, this is incredibly important to be able to get this done. We can do this uh, together, work together. Of course, we're working with our chairman. I've talked to him extensively about this, as has Senator uh, Hoven. Uh, he's uh, aware and uh, working with us to solve this problem. And uh, we're very hopeful that we can get it done, frankly, before we leave in August. That would be the best thing. Uh, for those who may face retaliation, it would create certainty in the marketplace. And the good thing for us is that uh, this is something that has uh, wide support, is WTO compliant, and it allows us to make our own decisions in America about what we want to do with voluntary labeling, just as every other country does. I think Senator Thune is not yet with us, so I'm going to turn to Senator Klobuchar, who is a great member of our committee. All right. Well, thank you very much, Senator Stabenow. Thank you, Senator Hoven. I was thinking as I saw Senator Heitkamp, Senator Grassley, these are my neighbors. Um, and uh, uh, yes, and everyone is represented when, when Senator Thune comes, except right. Wisconsin, but they have the Packers. So, um, But I think you all understand this is important in the Midwest, but it's really important for the entire country. We just came from a Georgia barbecue that uh, um, and had beef and pork. Yes, we did. Um, uh, that uh, Senator Isaacson put on for us. And um, I just think the people in my state and the rest of the country would like to know, um, make a choice and like to know if they can, if their food came from America. And this is all that this is about. Um, and we understand that this ruling is in place. So we want to be pragmatic. And as uh, Senator Stabenow said, um, responsible about this, and we believe the responsible way to do this is to uh, repeal uh, the mandatory labeling that's in place and put in its place a voluntary one. And based on uh, Senator Hoven's discussions uh, with the USTR, we just don't see this uh, as a problem under the law. Um, and we're hoping to get more and more colleagues on board. In my state alone, our agriculture sector provides more than 340,000 jobs and creates $75 billion in economic activity. So that just gives you a sense of what we're talking about. And we also like the idea of people uh, who go to a grocery store uh, having the ability to know if things are made in our own country. So um, we're very proud of this group that's come together in the spirit of bipartisanship and the spirit of American agriculture. Thank you. Senator Grassley. A great advocate, Senator Grassley. Yeah. This is uh, such a common sense, easily understood issue. Uh, very easy to explain that uh, you're just going to hear it from seven different <laughs> voices, I guess. <laughs> so, but yeah. first of all, I, Senator Hoven and Senator Stabenow need uh, to be thanked for their leadership. Uh, some of us here, uh, longer than others, started working on COOL back in the 1990s. I've always uh, supported COOL for meat because I believe that consumers have the right to know where their food is coming from. They know uh, where your t-shirts are made, just look at the label. So why shouldn't you have the same right to know where your food comes from? However, we must be true to our obligations at the World Trade Organization, which is ruled against our current law. This bill is a WTO compliant path uh, for a country of origin labeling. There's no way that Canada can dispute a voluntary labeling program when they have the same basic program. In the past, Canada has even proposed to the United States that a voluntary option could be a solution. To me, COOL boils down to one major point, the definition of what constitutes U.S. meat products. The bill introduced today will allow the market to decide in a voluntary way if meat should be labeled with its country of origin. This will address the required segregation with the mandatory labeling that everyone agrees is the core of the WTO case. If companies choose to label their product with a U.S. origin label, that label needs to have integrity. The bill today ensures there is a single, clear definition of what constitutes meat labeled as a product of our country. 
This is very important to me and many of my constituents who produce meat. Consumers will also be able to have confidence in the label of their meat. They will have the assurance that if a meat label says, quote unquote, product of the United States, then it is truly an American product. That's what all we want. We want to be WTO compliant. We want our consumers to be knowledgeable of where their product comes from. Nice job, right. yeah, there you go. Senator Heidi Heitkamp. Heidi. Can't we, That's he, tough to follow. Hit, I know, I know. He hit it all. 100% of the North Dakota delegation right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we would be remiss if we didn't um, applaud the great work of my colleague Senator Hoven and my friend Debbie Stabenow. Um, this, was, this is uh, a train that was headed, I think, down the track. Uh, uh, towards re total repeal much too quickly without someone saying stop, wait, understand that those of us who have for generations now supported cool country of origin labeling need a different path forward. Now, um, I, we would not be here, obviously, having had this discussion during the Farm Bill and been able to retain the country of origin labeling provisions in the Farm Bill. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for the WTO. And so um, what's critically important is to remind ourselves why we have country of origin labeling. And it's all about consumers having the ability to know where their food comes from. But equally important, if you spent a lot of time developing your herd, if you spent a lot of time developing your product, you have pride in that product. And you ought to have an opportunity to express that pride in a label. You ought to be able to tell people, look, this is beef that came from here. And that makes a difference. And so um, I think with a voluntary system, it's obviously WTO compliant. Um, we don't know what the reaction will be necessarily if we pass it. But I think based on past representations that Canada has made um, it, to the United States, and I think also taking a look at the Canadian counterpart, it would be awfully hard and disingenuous for them to argue that the bill that we're proposing, this made in the USA <coughs> bill, was in any way a violation of the WTO. And so um, I kind of joke, my, my dad used to have an expression, he was a, he's a crossroad trucker and, and, or, or a uh, heavy equipment operator, and he used to tell us when we was teaching us how to drive, don't back up more than you have to. And so um, backing up, well, it makes sense, right? So backing up all the way to repeal is not an answer to meet the, meet the interest in the, and the, um, the interest of consumers and the pride of our producers. And so we're, we're proposing this. It's compliant. I really want to applaud um, particularly Senator Hoven for taking this on because I think that train was moving down the track pretty fast until he stepped up and said, whoa. And as a result, I'm only going to back up the truck. Yeah. <laughs> Until he, he stepped up and said, you know, we're going to speak on this side of the aisle. We're going to do what we can to stop um, this train from moving down the track too far. And, and as a result, we have a great bipartisan bill that we think we can advance and be successful in the United States Senate. So thanks, John, for your hard work. Thank you. We should, we should emphasize one word that she just used, disingenuous, yes. for the Canadian government to challenge when we do exactly what they, what they did, and also following their suggestion. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. Questions? Questions. Yes. Are you going to offer this as an amendment to the highway bill? We may. Yeah. We very well may. So we're obviously building support for it, and we're trying to advance to get it done this month before the recess. And so it certainly is a possibility uh, as uh, an amendment to the highway bill. And I would just add that um, in addition to that, we'll, of course, uh, if that doesn't make sense, looking for other ways in terms of uh, must pass bills or, you know, other ways to approach mm -hmm. it. But we're going to work together with colleagues and, and uh, our goal is to get this done before August. Yep. Uh, I was hoping you could, uh, I guess, uh, further elaborate on your uh, discussions with Senator Roberts and some of your other colleagues who are obviously in, in favor of a full repeal first, and then maybe if we have time, perhaps maybe later in the year, we'll do like a, a, a some kind of voluntary program. And have you also talked with your colleagues in the House who have obviously passed a, a full repeal? Are they uh, on board with this at all? Right. First, as far as Pat, we've talked to uh, Senator Roberts uh, in terms of both the mandatory and the voluntary. And so we are repealing the mandatory and going to a voluntary. He supports that 
Now, he was working on a little bit different equation, uh, but he recognizes that we're solving the underlying problem of the right. WTO. So that's very important. Also, I've talked to Mike Conaway in the House, and of course, they like their bill. We understand that. I mean, that's the House. That's how the House and the Senate work. But the whole point is we want to advance this bill, and then we'll sit down and talk further with the House. But in, in my conversation with Mike yesterday, he was very supportive of working together. And I, and I would just add to that that I think um, while um, those who have not traditionally supported mandatory labeling would prefer to just have a repeal, um, they understand that there are two sides to this and uh, people are not objecting to the option of a voluntary label. I think that's pretty hard to object to, the idea of putting together a voluntary label. And why don't we want to be proud of products uh, made in the U.S., a U.S. product? And so um, at this point, you know, there there is not strong opposition as much as uh, just people, you know, at this point, you know, obviously preferring their version, but but understanding that there is a different view in the Senate. So I think we can work it out. And we're coming at it in a very practical way. Right. We're looking to solve the issue and make sure it works for everyone. Right. That's exactly, exactly what we're doing here. Exactly. Um, and yes, sir. What is the timeline and what is the risk here? We'd well, like. Obviously, this has gone to arbitration. You're heading for a summer recess in what two weeks. Uh, if this doesn't get resolved and it hangs over into September, uh, the timeline there would seem to favor retaliation. So that's why we're trying to get it done. We want to get it done before the end of the month, before the recess. And that's why we hope our colleagues will work with us to advance this bill, because then we'll sit down with the House and hopefully get this done this month. USTR, though, again, is saying whether you simply do a repeal or you do what we're saying, repeal with a replace, we're in the same position. So the important point is, let's get this done. And the, and the good, uh, and I totally agree with what Senator Hoven said. I would say that we're seeing that the process of going to retaliation has started, and that that it is likely to be, you know, sometime this fall. We don't know if that's September or October or November, but clearly we'd like to get this done now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and do you have a sense of where your colleagues are on this issue? Are are they aware that this is coming down the pike? Um, do you do you have a sense of how many are are definitely going to oppose this? Where do you think you're at? Most of them are mm -hmm. saying they want it. They want the problem solved. Right. Now there's some differences of opinion whether you just do the repeal or you do the repeal with the replace. But remember, you've got folks weighing in on both sides. So if you just take a practical view of this, what we're pitching is the solution that should help bring everybody right. together. And the and solution already suggested by these two other governments in the past. Exactly. And Good so point. far, I would say I've had no one say to me they're absolutely opposed. So we're in a situation where, you know, we all prefer our own approaches, uh, but nobody has said they're absolutely opposed, and everybody wants to solve the problem. And when we look at the votes in the Senate, this is the way to solve it. Jerry? Yes. Uh, yes. Two questions. Yes. Do you think there'll be a committee markup on this? And uh, secondly, can you tell me if uh, you you mentioned that there had been a previous voluntary bill introduced, voluntary labeling bill introduced, you know, some years ago? Can you tell us who who what senators and House members are behind she that? Certainly can. <laughs> yes. Um, well, first of all, I I doubt there'd be a markup. I mean, the next two weeks. I think this is more likely. Um, to, although, again, the majority of us on the committee have been working together on this, but I, I think logistically there would not be a market. It's more likely to come to the floor in some way, whether that's attached to a bill, whether it's a hotline, whether it's a, an independent vote. We will have to wait and see. Um, senator Cornyn was the senator that offered the voluntary uh, measure. Uh, you might take a look at that bill and who the co-sponsors were at the time. So there were, um, again, it was offered as an alternative, an alternative to, the to the mandatory. And that's one of the things we looked at as we were crafting this legislation. And Jerry, you can see we already have a majority of the Ag Committee as bill sponsors. Right. I, I think the other part 
too, is Thank that you. Come on step over. Well, I, I think the other part, too, Jerry, is that when you have a bipartisan bill with this kind of committee support, that tends to be the the mass that draws the gravity to it, you know, and and so um, it's it's much more likely that a bipartisan bill in the short window that we have to remedy this problem before we involve a lot of industries in country of origin label who think they have nothing to do with it, whether it's the wine <laughs> industry or or wherever right. they're going to retaliate, that 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 becomes the solution, and I think that's really a tribute to the bipartisan work that these two leaders have done because they now have have changed the subject offered an opportunity um, and a bill that has great bipartisan support great committee support and so we really expect that this is going to be the solution that gets advanced and remember that's how we got the farm bill done yeah. it was yeah. just the same pretty much group at the beginning of people on the ag committee that moved the farm bill and a lot of our colleagues don't have as many farms and uh, but right. they actually would care more about this because they have consumers who want to know that their food's made in America and they have people who may be retaliated against right. Right. Back exactly. Before, uh, yes, sir. Back before labeling became mandatory, the United States had voluntary labeling. No packer uh, took advantage of that. Why, ten years later, would uh, packers want to do that? Now, <laughs> well, again, I don't. I think it comes from consumers and it comes from producers. Uh, you know, you have, for example, RCAF. You have IBAN. You've got Farmers Union. You've got a lot of producers that want it uh, because they believe their consumers want it. And, and there's a growing well, consumer movement. Right, well, right, and that's what I was going to say. Uh, th things have changed a lot in the last 20 years in terms of how consumers look at labels and what the expectation is. And so I think I think as we look at kind of specialty crops, you know, whether it's craft right. beers or, or whatever it is, you know, having this label may in fact create a premium product you wouldn't have had in the past. Yeah. Yeah, I have two Mary questions. Claire. First of all, do you all have any sort of commitment from leadership that if you can, you know, if they do take amendments to transportation or, or any way that you can get it um, through, do you all have a commitment? Well, from yeah, leadership? I've talked to Senator McConnell, and he recognizes this is something that we want to resolve before the end of the month. So he'll work with us on it. And the exact path we're still working through, it's going to depend on a number of things. But he's well aware of it. We have talked about it. He recognizes it's something we'd like to get done before the end of the month. Okay. And also just wanted to say, what is your main sticking point with Senator Roberts? What would you say is the main sticking point? Why is he up here too? You know, it comes down to a little bit of this, how, how do Canada and Mexico react? Uh, you know, that that's really kind of the issue. And that's why, again, um, you know, we've taken the time to talk to USTR and they're really telling us whether you just have the repeal or you have the repeal plus the voluntary program, we're, we're essentially in the same place. So uh, again, it's about solving the problem and, and he's been good to work with. He has been. Um, yeah. I think, you know, he, he just has been, um, what I, we've been working on it. He's been good about working with us. And as I think uh, Senator Stadnall <coughs> said it probably better than anybody, it's kind of like people have different preferences, but again, this is, a practical approach to solve the problem and try to get everybody on board. You know, just as an aside, by the way, when you hear from people that, it, you, know, you may hear from some anti cool folks that, well, you know, Canada or Mexico should have a veto over the United States. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you, when we were doing the Farm Bill and we were discussing our approach on the cotton case with Brazil, and people and a committee uh, raised, or I said, well, what, how, what will Brazil think? We heard loudly from members of the committee, they do not tell us what to do. They don't have a veto over what our policy is in the United States. And so uh, it's interesting to me uh, if someone suddenly thinks uh, that our friends in Canada, and they are our friends, we very are all much, very, very much so, but um, you know that what we do internally as a country around voluntary laboring is the business of the United States. And we certainly want to have a great relationship and and meet all our trade obligations. Mm -hmm. but it's like it's their business and how they correct. do their own voluntary correct. labeling. Yeah, the issue is WTO compliant, right? Beyond that, it's up to the United mm -hmm. States to decide and what type right. of voluntary plans it has. And this is compliant. Thanks so much. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. It. All right. Thank you. All right. Well.